Welcome to our July edition of Hidden Histories. This month, we will be taking a closer look at a small, beautifully decorated book that tells the story of a woman who was once so well known that a generation of women bore her name in a tribute to her short but important life. Our book is entitled, A Sermon Preached at Haverhill, Massachusetts, in remembrance of Miss Harriet Newell, wife of the Reverend Samuel Newell, missionary to India, who died at the Ile de France, November 30, 1812 aged 19 years to which are added memoirs of her life. A long title for a story of a woman whose life was cut tragically short, but her letters and diaries published in this tiny book helped to lead countless men and women to a life of service as a missionary. Known as the first American heroine of the missionary enterprise, Harriet Atwood Newell was born on October 10, 1792 to Moses and Mary Atwood. 1792 was a time of transition. The United States of America was still recovering from the American Revolution, George Washington was re-elected for a second term as president, and Kentucky had just become the 15th state. Harriet's earliest childhood, from her account, was pretty ordinary. It wasn't until 1809, when at the age of 16, that a great revival broke out in her hometown of Haverhill, Massachusetts, and Harriet devoted her life to God and hoped to one day lead others to do the same. In February 1812, Harriet married the Reverend Samuel Newell, who was co-founder of the American Board of Commissioners for Foreign Missions. Newell had been educated at Harvard College and Andover Theological Seminary, and had studied medicine shortly before he left for India. On February 19, 1812, Harriet, Samuel, and their friends Ann Donnerham and Ann Judson left Massachusetts for Calcutta, India. The journey took 112 days and Harriet was confined to her bed for weeks with seasickness. Her journal described the harsh reality of life at sea. On June 16th she wrote, Last night, by sunset, the anchor was thrown again, a heavy sea. The vessel rocked violently all evening. The water, rushing into the cabin windows, overflowed our rooms. Harriet spent much of the voyage writing to her mother and her letters described the crew, her shipmates, and her desire to be a positive influence on those around her. Her frank and honest descriptions of life at sea help us to better understand the sacrifices these couples were making as they sailed around the world. The group arrived in Calcutta on June 17, 1812, but their time in India was short as the East India Company worried about their influence over the trade market, decided to expel the missionaries. On July 16, 1812, Harriet records in her journal, How dark and intricate are the ways of providence. We were ordered by the government to leave the British territories and to return to America immediately. On July 28, the missionaries received word that the Ile de France and their English governor were more favorable toward Christian missionaries, and they set sail once again hoping to find a safe place to settle. Sadly, this voyage, which normally took six weeks, lasted over three months because of poor weather and a leaky ship. Harriet was pregnant with her first child, but she contracted dysentery and gave birth prematurely while on board the ship. The baby died five days later, and Harriet, still weak from disease and the long voyage, died on November 30, 1812. Harriet was only 19 years of age. While Harriet's missionary work was over too soon, her husband Samuel recognized the potential impact of her work on others around the world. He wrote a memoir of her life, gathered together her letters and diaries that pertained to her faith, and assembled them in a book to be published back in America. Samuel included the sermon given at Harriet's funeral by Dr. Leonard Woods, who was a close family friend and a professor at Andover Theological Seminary. The first edition was published in 1815, and the book was so popular that a new edition was published each year. Our copy was published in 1830, 15 years after the original printing. This octavo, or small book, was easy to carry around in a pocket 
or when one traveled, and was quickly influencing men and women to follow in her footsteps in the missionary field. Harriet's story was so inspirational that women began to name their daughters Harriet after the young woman who had shown such remarkable courage and given her life to lead others to Christ. Her husband went on to serve as a missionary in other areas of the world, establishing schools and writing books about his experiences. He worked with cholera victims in India and sadly contracted the disease in 1821 and died soon after. The Judsons also continued their work as missionaries, but their lives were beset with tragedy and Anne died of smallpox in 1826. Her diaries and letters were also published in America and she, like her friend Harriet, was posthumously hailed as a heroine of the missionary world. 208 years after her death, Harriet Atwood Newell and her popularity have waned, but her legacy of being the first American to die in missionary service are preserved forever. In his sermon, Dr. Woods said, Her life, measured by months and years, was short, but far otherwise when measured by what she achieved. Come back next month to see what hidden history we reveal from the Hidden Archives.